and a warm welcome back everybody at Just About Watches. Now today we're going to take a little look at a micro brand called Advisor Watches and their model Astro Helm V1. Antique Automatic, that's the title they've given it because they have a quartz version. Now we look at the brand in hand and that happens to be the automatic. Now as you all know I'm a bit of a fickler for the presentation, the entire experience as I call it. I've taken the outer carcass off, that's just protective and a well thought out idea quite frankly. Now you'll instantly recognize this case style as the same used by Vincero Collective, another micro brand that concentrates on dress watches and a very good dress watch it is for the price point. So you look at the silver embossing and you can see that it oozes quality. Attention to detail is very important in my view. So let's have a look. It's not gone over the top with the standard protection but that's all you need. It's got a, a nice little velveteen inlay that gives that little bit of quality again. Remembering that this piece is actually retailing at this moment for only $249 and therefore it is an absolute no-brainer with regards to whether or not it's worthwhile buying. It's a must for your collection if you can afford to. So let's have a little look. It is snugly fitted into the case and by that I mean I have to tug it out. I've not got no issues with that. I'd rather it be snugly fitted than it fall out and drop on the floor. So I'm going to try and get you in past one of the problems that this brand has been revealed to have, or this particular model, let's say, and that's the extremely reflective dome case. That dome is absolutely gorgeous. It, it really does stand out, literally. Now, I was watching a reviewer on YouTube who mentioned this, and at the time I cringed and I thought you're being hyper negative it surely can't be that reflective but it is does that put me off not in the slightest I'm going to try and pan in so that you can see the the vintage appearance of the brushed dial I think that that watch face is gorgeous it really is unique to this particular model. I've not seen that finish, which, which almost gives it that wood grain effect on many dial. It does stand out. Now, there's no taking away from this that it pays tribute to the 1930s California dial. Now, there's a bit of myth with regards to the California dial and the Panerai were the first to actually use it. Now, a little bit of research will tell you that in the 1930s, Rolex actually used to source their, their dials, etc., from the United States. And they, in, they even made pieces for Panerai. And it was that manufacturing within the United States that gave the the dial style, the moniker or nickname of the California dial, half Roman and half Arabic. Now, it works for me, and as you see in, in the image I'm showing, it isn't as illegible as the previous reviewer that I looked at, and this isn't disrespectful to him, it's just proving a point. It isn't as illegible as one would like you to think. You can see the dial. You can tell the time perfectly well, regardless of the fact that it is high gloss. It is very neatly made. It oozes quality. I like the fact that it is high gloss. That, to me, 
is almost giving and what what I call a magpie effect it it stands on the wrist in such a fashion you can't help but look it gives that reflection not just on the the domed glass but but on every part of the dial and the casing very high sheen it it does miss that little nuance I have of the marked crown, but I do believe that that's to try and keep it in in line with the vintage effect that the company are trying to achieve, and I believe that they've achieved this incredibly well. I'm trying to get away from the, uh, the reflections, but that's nigh on impossible. It even goes to the depth of using an antique style luminescent coating for the markers if you look they look rather what we call in Britain grubby so they, they, they they're almost got a dirty effect but it works it's in tune with the indices they are not bright white they're not these random colors of blue or green they are an off-white magnolia even to give it uh, perhaps the right term. They all go to making this piece quite legitimately vintage looking. Now, when you go to the back, it's a modified version of the Seiko NH35 automatic. The modification is on the balance wheel. I like that touch, it's absolutely gorgeous. So you can kind of ignore my nuance of the, the marked crown because it has that reasoning. If it didn't have that modification on the movement itself, I would have thought perhaps they're just cheapskates and cutting corners. But they're not cheapskates. This is very well made and of very high quality. I do like the adoption of the screw for strap change. There's nothing worse than fiddling about with a pin that tends to, in my case, jump out of sight. And I'll never find it until the time I don't bloody want it. So, well done on that aspect. I think that's a neat touch. The leather strap is actually what we would call as velveteen or brushed suede, brushed velvet type effect. So it's not smooth, but it's not rough very very high quality now bearing in mind that this piece is only $250 under actually with a 249 if we wanted to be pedantic it really has come to quality made affordability again I won't forget the little fact that it has my pet nuance if we can get it in somehow because this is very, very reflective. Just popped it in there, the advisor on the buckle. Again, very well thought out, very well made, no corner cut. So a quick tech spec, because we don't really need to go into too much detail with regards to this. It has a neat little date window, very legible, very unassuming it isn't boastful on the face. Now, it has IP plated rose gold. Basically, that is to give it or put it in keeping with the antique look. I think that if it had a stainless steel finish, it wouldn't work. I think the incorporation of the rose gold with the dial and the strap coloration works perfectly. The technical specifications on this are quite simple. 44 millimeter diameter, 14 millimeter depth. Question that it actually is about 16 millimeter deep if you take into account that extraordinary dome effect. I think that's absolutely gorgeous. It has a lug width of 24 millimeters. Now, the double dome sapphire crystal could do with a bit of AR coating perhaps triple AR as some watches I've recently reviewed have because it is very reflective based on the design of the dome it doesn't detract though I can't emphasize that enough you can read this 
pretty much anywhere and at any time. Unless, of course, the, the sunshine was so brilliant that it, it reflected off everything anyway. So I would disagree with the previous reviewer when he said that the, the reflection detracted from the ability to tell the time. It doesn't. Take my word for it. If it did, I'd tell you. We've mentioned the fact it has what I call the museum case, letting you all know that it has a wonderful movement in it. It's not an expensive movement, but it's a workhorse movement, and you know it's going to be as reliable as any that you need for this price point. The water resistance isn't going to be huge. It's about 10 atmospheres. So not a huge amount, but you can go swimming in this. So the rest of it I've already mentioned, the California dial that has that vintage effect. It works. The brushed face. The, the attention to detail is epitomized with the use of antique effect loom. So basically you don't get that brilliant white loom, you don't get that green or blue loom, you get this vintage off-white, almost cream. That goes with the indices and I think that works. Now they've called this leather strap crazy horse brown leather. I don't quite get that although it does conjure an image of the velvet type of feel you have to to the skin and cover of a horse. In the UK and perhaps other countries we'd call it brushed velvet, velveteen or even suede effect. Very very smooth but not overly smooth so it's not a patent leather or one of those leathers that has been dip dyed. It, it really is high quality finish. This piece does come with a one year warranty. I don't think you have to worry about that. It's got what it says. It, it really is one of those pieces that if you look at it on your wrist it does look the part and, and unfortunately it doesn't give credit to itself with regards to that reflection but there's lighting in here which is a bit of a nuisance at the best of times. So how would I rate this piece then? Well for the price point you simply can't go wrong on the design. It gets a very high 9 out of 10 because I think it's absolutely gorgeous. The tapering of the, the fixed bezel, the, the high gloss polish, the brushed face, if, if I can get the word out with this morphine, the brushed face, all those features go together to, to build an intrinsic antique style watch and it does look the part. They've cut no corners bearing in mind the price point. It really is that good. Would I recommend anybody to buy it? Absolutely. Now remember that this particular model is limited to just 100 pieces. So you're looking at, this is number 40 of 100, you're looking at something that needs to be in your collection pretty quick. I would go out and buy it. For $249 it's an absolute no-brainer. It looks far more expensive on the wrist. I'd not be embarrassed to wear it. And I don't say that lightly. The presentation gets a 10 out of 10 for the price point alone. Anything that goes to the degree they have with regards to the casing hasn't worried too much about the profit. We know that the Seiko NH35s are not expensive to buy, but when you adapt them, they do get a little more expensive and therefore the profit margins go down on these pieces. So for advisor watches and this particular model, they, they have to be applauded for not being too capitalistic. They've considered the price. 
they had it at $349, which I would have still paid. $249 was an absolute no-brainer as said. So, if I was to tot up the scores with regards to the look and design, it is way up there. If it is to go on the presentation, it is extremely way up there. If I was to go on the price point, it is extraordinary how these micro brands are maintaining that affordability and bringing these designs. And yes, it is very Panerai inspired. But we know that Rolex made the Panerai in the 1930s. We know that the Californian dial and style came from there. It doesn't pretend to be a Panerai, but it gives you that sense you own a very similar design. And for those of us who are not pretentious, you are onto a winner. It really is an effective piece. I give it a comfortable eight across the board. So, as I pick up my little toffee hammer, I'm ready to smash a Rolex, I think. Probably one of those fake things that's going on in the, the main group. I give my usual caveat that just about watches is not just about watches, ironically. It's about my trying to raise awareness of brain tumour and cancer and the need for more research. You all know by now, or most of, it, or most of the members will know for certain that, that I have a brain tumour or two and my wife has cancer. And an awful lot of members, believe it or not, actually have cancer themselves. They don't bleat on about it and neither do I. But I feel it remiss of me if I don't use the YouTube channel as an area where I can act, just simply mention the fact that we need to recognise that everybody akin to wearing a watch, virtually everybody that wears a watch or will wear a watch is likely to be touched by cancer or brain tumours or have a family member or a friend getting brought down by these dreaded conditions. And I say dreaded with experience. So, please consider sharing, please consider subscribing, and please show that you care. Because you might just be one of those people, just like me, who thought it never happened to them. And you could find that the Just About Watchers legacy will provide you with some kind of help and support as we grow because we have donated a significant amount of money to the charities and we want to keep doing so. So on that note, I'm going to wish you all a good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. Most importantly, I'll say my usual, be well. Goodbye.